Welcome to Love Doll Science. This is Stacy Love Doll. This video introduces the Interactive Science Notebook and explains how we're going to use it in science class this year. Interactive Science Notebooks, or ISNs, are better than regular notebooks because you use them to help you remember and understand the information, not just as a place to cram notes and handouts that get stuffed in your locker. You need two composition books for science class this year. We'll use the first one for semester and I'll save the second one for you for second semester. Glue sticks and colored pencils are really important. Using color to illustrate your notes is a key part of science notebooking and we're going to practice that in class and you're going to get really good at it. The first couple of pages of the notebook are going to be reserved for the table of contents. Each page after that will get a title, a page number, and a date. We'll talk about reflections that go on the left side of every page in the rest of this video and in class we'll learn how to use color to emphasize key information. Color and organization are proven to help people remember things. And remember, students are people too. The left and the right side of the interactive science notebook have different purposes. The right side is for new information and the left side is for the student to process the information that's just been handed out on the right side. The idea is from brain science, where different sides of the brain do different things. So what goes on the right? On the right side, you're going to put class notes, handouts, video notes, labs, vocabulary lists, things like that. That's all new information. On the left side, the students are going to process that information. And I'm going to refer to all this processing as a reflection. Students are going to have a reflection on every left side. Reflections can be things like summaries or diagrams that reorganize the information that you've learned on the right side. So here are the steps. You've just finished a lab or a page of notes on the right side of the notebook. So now what? You need to do a reflection on the left side of the page and it needs to be about the information that's on the opposite page. Ask yourself, what's the big picture here? What's the main idea or the purpose of the information on the right side? Then decide on what type of reflection would be best for the information. Sometimes the best reflection will be to draw a picture or, to, or an illustration. For example, this is the water cycle that was drawn by an eighth grader a couple years ago. This is an example of photosynthesis and it's being, the steps of photosynthesis are being illustrated. Concept maps are also a really good idea for reflections. Bubble maps, flow charts, tree diagrams, all of those things can be really good for summarizing what you've learned. Here's an example of a double bubble map that we used for the muscular system in seventh grade. This is an example of a matrix that we used for summarizing lab data. Sometimes the best reflection is going to be some kind of a written summary of what's going on. Three, two, ones, 30 word summaries, and jottings are things that you can do for that. And we'll practice some of these in class. Here's an example of a three, two, one that we used last year for the digestive system. Another idea for a reflection can be mnemonic devices or pictures and rhymes. I bet you know some already. For example, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's a mnemonic device for helping you remember the order of operations. Another idea for remembering things and for a reflection would be a poem. This is an example of a poem that we made up to help remember the difference between an independent variable and a dependent variable. So why keep an interactive notebook? We keep an interactive notebook to enhance our learning. We know from brain science that if you don't use something, you don't remember it. The interactive notebook is one tool that we're going to use in science class to help us remember and understand the concepts that we're working on. So all of that information gets in your brain and you know what to do with it. ISNs are good for um, taking a note-taking process and making it active instead of passive. Students will organize as they learn and it'll help us remember because we know when you're creative, people remember more. Interactive notebooks are really good for the teacher too. It reminds me to give you time to absorb your ideas. If the left side is blank, then I know that we need more time to make sure that we do something with the information that we've just learned. Your notebook is going to be part of your overall science grade and it's going to be graded on things like thoroughness, is it complete, 
quality, how good a job have you done, organization, appearance, and making connections to other subjects. Visual appearance is very important. We know that the brain doesn't learn things that are messy and difficult to read or understand. For more information on science notebooking, you can go to sciencetoybox.com. So now you know how we're going to use interactive science notebooks in our science class this year. Thanks for watching.